All right, let me say first off, thanks to those of you that took to Twitter and tweeted out your hashtag no boundaries Q&A questions. Honestly, I thought there were going to be more controversial questions, uh, touching on touchier and edgier issues, but hey, it is what it is. We'll do more of these in the future, and maybe you guys will ask some of those questions then. But thanks to the, again to those of you that did. This is part one of this No Boundaries q and I also did one for the Facebook side of the house. If you haven't liked the show's Facebook page, please check out the link in the description and go ahead and like the page. And if you haven't followed the show on Twitter yet, please do so. And before we get started, let me just mention that as of yesterday, OTR Essential indeed finally has t-shirts. So check out the Pro Wrestling Tees uh, link that will again be in the description box and get yourself a piece of the action. And once I believe it's 25 shirts are sold based off of the designs that are up there now, I can do more designs and believe me, there will be a lot more designs and slogans and shirt styles to come. Buy a shirt! And you're asking why I don't have a shirt yet? Because the design just became available yesterday. I'm waiting for mine to come in, okay? Let's not judge here. Anyways, on to the Q&A. Let's get started and see what we got. Trollosophy. Will you bring back the 15 reasons why somebody sucks videos? In some way, shape, or form, yes. Sometimes it may be 15 reasons sucks. Some may, times it might just be a general, this person sucks and here's why they suck. Or here's why this sucks. Yes, I'll be bringing those back. Stay tuned. Of Love and Hate, Top 10 White NBA Players. It's a difficult question for me to answer because, number one, he didn't specify whether you're talking about American-born white players, North American-born white players, or if you're talking about international guys being thrown in there too. So I really can't answer that question because I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for. So maybe if you hit me up on Twitter and you ask the question and clarify, I'll give you the answer there. A hug life for life. Is it a gay man's dream to get with Dino Bravo? Number one, I didn't realize gay men like to have sex with dead bodies. I thought those were independent things. Uh, not necessarily uh, joined at the pelvis there, if you will. Uh, second thing, Dino Bravo's dead. Moving on. You know who else is dead? Bailey's push. Huh. Moving <laughs> oh, 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 he's going to engage. Keyboard figures of fire. Activate. Ah. You'll live. You'll live. Uh, maybe not, but try. There will be better days for Bailey. Or maybe not. Uh, Era of reality. Who do you see as WWE champion come WrestleMania 34? And I'm assuming you're not just asking me about Raw or SmackDown's champion. You're specifically asking about the SmackDown champion where the WWE title currently resides. Excellent, excellent question. I would not be surprised if we end up going down the direction for the Raw side of the house with the Universal title that it's Braun Strowman time come WrestleMania 34, unless the WWE rushes and hotshots that. Um, there's a couple different ways they could go. One, if they are patient and they wait and they want to do Shinsuke versus AJ at Mania, that might involve the title, even though I wouldn't do it for the title. Um, another part of that is... I could see this company really pointing towards Cena and Reigns at WrestleMania, and they very well might want to throw the title on there to elevate SmackDown and probably move Reigns over to SmackDown or potentially do some type of switch and have Reigns take the belt back to Raw. Maybe Strowman takes the Universal title to SmackDown. The thing is, is we're a long ways away from that, you know, eight and a half months, but it's really hard for me to see where they might go at this point. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. You could say, well, that's a surprise. Well, a lot of things are surprises. doesn't mean they're good. It just means maybe that it's hard to see what type of long-term plans the WWE has. I'm just saying. Ash the King, who do you hate more, Vince and Kevin Dunn or Internet fans? Now, let me, let me always correct one thing. We always talk about Internet fans, and I'm guilty of this too. Internet fans... You know, a lot of people that watch wrestling that aren't even necessarily hardcore fans get on the internet. Usually when I reference internet fans, I am talking about the hardcore, mark out for ROH, New Japan flips and kicks, uh, talk about how much that shit is great when it's not. Um, that type of crowd, liking the certain types of guys, the certain types of matches. 
even though the justification for liking those guys or those matches a lot of times um, is very, very devoid of logic and just, in general, not sensible. Um, but again, we're talking about fans. And it's annoying as over the years some of the fans are and have been, whether that be the the CM Punk stands or the Daniel Bryan fanboys. Um, nothing could compare to the annoyance that I have with Vince and Kevin Dunn. Because... Fans can be incredibly ignoring, but I can ignore that. I can avoid that or I can confront that and direct myself towards that. I have control over that. I don't have any control over what Vince and Kevin Dunn decide to do with the people to push, the way they present the product, uh, how they go about presenting the product in terms of the creative aspects. It's why you're seeing them do more of these three-way and four-way matches because they're too fucking lazy to actually write out and plan out stories. They've gotten that sloppy and that lazy as a company to where we're just going to throw everybody in as much as possible into these multi-people matches because it's easier for us to plan out. And then a lot of times they still do a crappy job of it. I mean, how lazy is that? So Vince and Kevin done by far. Fans are fans. They're not even the real marks when it comes to the business anymore. It's the people in the business by far. Uh, Andrew Harrington 4. Did you hear Nikki Bella wants her wedding to happen at WrestleMania 34? No, I didn't. No, I don't believe that. Um, and I don't know if that really fits because I would think WWE is still going to want to get a big money match out of Cena come next year in New Orleans, especially since you already did the intergender tag or the mixed tag match, excuse me, at WrestleMania 33 this year. They're going to want to get him in the ring with the Reigns or a Strowman or Samoa Joe or somebody along those lines. So I don't see where that would fit or that would work. I'd be more inclined to believe they would do that in maybe SummerSlam 2018 if they were going to do something. But they would be one of those things where Macho and Miss Elizabeth have been married for years and then they did the shit on uh, the pay-per-view SummerSlam 91. Match made in hell and a match made in heaven. Oh, baby. That might be the type of thing they would do. Uh, and how much longer do you see Vince in charge of the WWE product? Uh, either until he dies or until he's so incapacitated that he's no longer able to. And... You know, that could be any day now, but that could also be five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road. It's hard to say. And the one thing I will caution people is as much as everybody maybe looks forward to that point and says, hey, we're getting to the end of the road here. Um, sometimes be careful what you wish for. And if you got away from the, the one chief, then you could have too many chiefs and not enough Indians, if you know what I mean. Too many people trying to lead and nobody actually leading and nobody actually following. It could actually get worse because there would be a lack of decisiveness and a lack of vision even greater than what we already have with the product. So just be careful. Be careful. I'm not saying it wouldn't be a positive, but it very well might not be. It might even be a bigger negative. Uh, little DJ Boy, your perfect or dream WrestleMania main event? All time would have been Austin Hogan. Especially as a culmination to a real invasion angle that didn't really suck like the one we fucking got. Um, that would be the dream WrestleMania. Austin as Austin. Hogan as Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Part of the NWO. Just imagine the box office of Austin and Hogan headlining and main eventing a WrestleMania. How the match would turn out? I don't know. Might be one of those things that you didn't even really have to do shit because the crowd would be so involved in it and so into it that it might not have mattered. Uh, Phenomenal Juan, what are some of your favorite? I'm sorry, I hit the damn camera and or the microphone and shook the damn camera. I gotta watch that. What are some of your favorite video games of all time? What is it? NFL 2K5, the one with Terrell Owens on it. I still think is maybe the greatest football game of all time. I used to play a lot of Madden 2000 back in the day. Um, uh, going back in the day, day, uh, what else used to be my favorite? Super Mario Brothers three, obviously. I mean, that, that, that's a legendary game in and of itself. Um, used to do play a lot of like Psych, Excite Bike and Rad Racer. Oh Christ, man! So you know you're getting old. You start to forget some of these things. Obviously, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Um, you also got to throw in there Tech Mobile. I, I played those games a lot on the old Nintendo as a kid. Um, once I got older, I would say the NCAA college football games, um, 
Wasn't as big on the Maddens, honestly. Wasn't as big on the Maddens. Grand Theft Auto used to play that all the time. Uh, <laughs> so just uh, gives you some ideas. Um, Gator Nation 02. What percent of the current main roster is Conor McGregor more interesting than? A tough question for me to ask because a lot of this roster for me for WWE isn't interesting. And frankly, Conor McGregor is not interesting to me either. He's not. To me, I look at him as a shrimp version of Ric Flair and a poor imitation wannabe at that. That can just go a little bit deeper in terms of the language he uses. Look at this fucking guy! Who gives a sh I don't give a shit about Conor McGregor. I'm not going to say who gives a shit about him because clearly people do. Because there are going to be people that fork over ninety nine ninety nine to watch this freak show come the end of August. Um... But I don't know, hard question for me to answer because most of the main roster I don't find interesting and I don't find Conor McGregor interesting. I think he's overrated as bricks from an entertainment standpoint. I really do. I, just, I don't see what the appeal is. But people like him, eh, so be it. That's why I don't really talk about it very much. Um, the Ryan Steele, how can you talk about believability when one of your favorite characters, The Undertaker, was completely unbelievable as a character? It's a valid question. You bring up some good points and shut up! But seriously, is it just about believability or is it about suspension of disbelief? That's where it's important. And when the character is good and he does exciting things, and frankly, even if you don't buy that this is the dead man and all of this and the urn gives him magical powers, the way WWE used to present it back when they were the WWF and he's shooting lightning bolts and he's coming out of the caskets, it was presented in such a way where you could suspend your disbelief that you believe the character could actually do something like that. That's what matters. That's what matters. You could still buy it, even though it was way out in left field, even though it was kind of farcical. If you present the character well enough, you can believe just about anything. Um, so that's why. Because The Undertaker is the GOAT of WWE. What more do I need to say? Moving on. Sue Pete Corbin. What is your response to those who say heels don't need to win matches or feud because they're heels? It's one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever heard of. If the heel never beats anybody, then why are they a threat? You know, Frankenstein had to fuck up a few villagers. Dracula had to bite the necks of a few people and suck their blood out. But if they never actually did anything, if they never able, were actually able to go over, follow through, do anything to anybody, then why would you care? That's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard when it comes to professional wrestling. They don't need to win matches or feuds because they're heels. Then how do they ever get to that point where you take them that seriously that you could draw big time money with them? And part of the problem in today's business is that even the people that are supposed to be heel villains, they don't want to be hated. They want to be cool. And then, of course, the fans try to hijack that shit, too, and say, oh, we want to cheer this guy. We want to boo this guy. And it's really hard to do wrestling. Because, frankly, fans are idiots and the wrestling business is full of idiots. But when if you hear somebody say that, they're clearly an idiot. It's part of the reason why people didn't buy Jinder Mahal as a heel champion. I still don't know if they do. Because his one loss record was horrible. What did he actually do of any significance to go over anybody that freaking mattered? He was not built up. He was constantly knocked down and kept down. He was Rusev's jobber bitch just a few months ago. And now you're supposed to take him seriously just because he's a new guy with the world title? Give me a fucking break. At some point in time, the guy's got to beat somebody. You got to progress them. You got to develop their character and grow their character. Do, a, do heels necessarily need to win every feud? No. But never win a feud? Stupid. Absolutely stupid. Not need to win matches? Ridiculous. Because this is that Cena effect. When Cena would get into a program with the heel so often, he'd win the first time, then he'd win again, and if we decided to have a third match, he'd win the third time. By the time he got to the second match, let alone the third match, where's the story? Why the fuck would you even bother? Because there's no threat of Cena losing, and there's no threat of this other guy winning, and you get to the point again where you get to Bizarro World, where you hate the hero and you cheer the villain. The villain becomes the hero. The hero becomes the villain. That's, uh, I'm sure people say that, and they're stupid. 
And if they want to belabor or argue the point with you, you can fucking send them my way. What dipshits. Luke Granger, 25. Thoughts on people crapping on WWE for being scripted, yet they lap up this McGregor Mayweather stuff. <sighs> Where do I even begin? I won't even say much about it other than the fact of the same type of people knocking on professional wrestling for years are the same type of people that actually believe reality shows are real. That's the level of intelligence you're dealing with. The same type of people that worship the ground people like the Kardashians fucking walk on. Do you really want to get into an argument with those type of people? The same type of people that actually believe boxing, UFC, mixed martial arts as a whole, is 100% above board and on the up and up legit real. If you believe that, you are a fucking moron because do you really think Vegas would allow betting lines and put money out there and risk money being lost by something that was 100% up and up. Now, how much it's manipulated, that could depend. How much Vegas or powers that be influence things, yeah. But to sit there and believe that UFC or to believe even that this Mayweather-McGregor shit is on the 100% up and up. You've got to be a fucking clown. Furthermore, if you don't think McGregor and Mayweather planned this whole shit out ahead of time, you're also a fucking idiot. Like, who actually thinks this is a 100% shoot? Who even thinks this is any shoot whatsoever? Who thinks this is anything other than 100% work in terms of all these press conferences that they're doing all over the damn place? It's 100% work. And it's a good work, but it is still a work. But some people, you're just not going to be able to convince that. But as professional wrestling fans, people should be smart enough to be able to spot a work. Although, again, these are the same people just six years ago that actually thought CM Punk wasn't under contract when Vince put the title on him after Money in the Bank 2011. Like, they actually thought Vince was going to take his top title, put it on a guy when he's not even under contract. Like, who actually thinks that shit was legit? Well, frankly, it's the same people that still think the screw job was legit 20 fucking years later. Give me a break. Uh, but there you go. It's because people are stupid. Uh, HReview73, which year in the Attitude Era do you think was the worst? It's 2001 and it's not even close. WCW and ECW die. We got that abortion of an Austin heel turn, an abortion of an invasion angle that wasted pretty much all of that year. By far the worst year of the Attitude Era. Uh, Platon Afro, do you think we'll ever see a WCW competition or light competition for WWE? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Never say never. But then you get to the point of if WWE's audience continues to decline and some other company, whoever it may be, and I won't even name one because they might not even exist at this point, gets to a point where they're getting a million and a half and two million viewers. Uh, that might be a battle. That might be WCW-like competition for the modern WWE. And what a sad, pathetic place we would be at when two major wrestling companies were battling it out, averaging between a million and a half to two million viewers. And we're a lot closer to that point than you might think. And Demand Champ, or Dema Champ is here. How long do you see WWE keeping this current second brand? Second brand in terms of brand split, brand extension? Um... For now, I don't see it going away because what happens is is they feel like even with the additional expenses that comes from running uh, two different tours and two different shows is eventually it's going to allow them to make a little more profit because they can do a pay-per-view for the Raw brand and a house show for the SmackDown brand. Flip side, they could do a SmackDown and have Raw have an, a house show the same night so they can run multiple shows. And they put themselves in a way to where they have to do as much as they possibly can in order to honestly turn a profit. So at this point in time, I don't see where the brand split's going away anytime in the near future. That is subject to change. But right now, I just don't see where the WWE could justify it from a fiscal standpoint, honestly. So... That's all the time I have for the Twitter questions. I'll be back in a few hours to do the Facebook version of the No Boundaries Q&A. Remember, if you haven't followed the show on Twitter, please do so. If you haven't liked the Facebook page, please do so. And most importantly of all, 
after you subscribe or die to this channel, buy a damn t-shirt. Please.